with this section of the chapter here, we're going to get into the different decision structures that will allow us to control the flow of our program. We've seen this before. This isn't really new. Uh, in fact, none of it too new, except in the way that Python implements it. So that's really the challenge here is to take the existing knowledge that you already have about this and just translate what you need to know for Python in terms of the statements. So let's do a quick review, relational and logical operators. Uh, we've had we've seen this before when we were doing um, both back in the search engine. We were looking at how to tweak our searches with Google. We used relational and logical operators. Here we're going to use the same thing. Um, I'm going to introduce an idea called the condition, where the condition is the particular expression that we're going to evaluate as to whether it's true or false. And we're going to, the things that we will use to evaluate are generally the relational operators, the less than, greater than, equal type things. Uh, we'll also potentially throw in some ands and ors and maybe some nots. Either way, whatever we end up with, the condition itself or the expression will either evaluate to be true or false. And there's no maybes, it's either true or false. So we use these evaluations to control the decision statements. That if this, go do that, otherwise do something else. So we control the loops and we choose between different options. And we also have a, a little diversion here where they talk about the strings and ASCII values. If you recall from the chapter where we discussed how computers utilize text or character-based information, it all rolls back to the whatever its ASCII value is. And we had a chart that we looked at and we looked up what the decimal values were for various uh, characters and we did those conversions you'll see some relevance to what we did here as we move forward. So here's just a quick refresher. We've got, you know, a little table down here that show what the decimal values are for a few particular ASCII characters. Now remember that they we talked about the original ASCII set and then we talked about the extended ASCII character set, those above uh, 126. And some of the ones that are of use above that have to do with things like fractions and numeric uh, currency type things. For instance, the, the cent sign, uh, plus or minus, various different things like that. The degrees, if you want to do degrees Celsius, degrees Fahrenheit. So in order to get those things into your output, you can't um, just type them on the screen necessarily. Sometimes you have to use the actual ASCII value. For instance, there's no plus minus symbol on your keyboard. But you can output that using this function, the char function, uh, to actually determine or put that out. And you can also use the ORD function to find out what the, the ASCII decimal value is for a given character string. So the relational operators, nothing new here. Uh, less than, greater than, you know, these things apply to numbers. They can apply to character strings as well, and that's done more in an alphabetical uh, constraint. So, you know, cat is less than dog because alphabetically it comes before. And that's typically the best way to think about it. Now, the, the, now we'll cover the, the exceptional thing here, but the ASCII table really is going to determine what things come first. So here's all of our standard different operators. The thing that you have to watch here is the programming or the Python notation. The one that will get you in trouble quicker than anything is using a single equal sign in where you really need to use the double equal sign. So if you're evaluating an expression is A equal to B, where you're comparing two variables, that requires the two equal signs. Remember a single equal sign is used to assign a value to a variable. Uh, not, not equal to with the exclamation point, less than, greater than, those typical ones. We have a couple of new things called in and not in. In means that it's 
something that's found inside of another string or it's a, it is actually a substring and not in means just what you would think it's not in there so there are a couple of rules here that we can look at an integer can be compared to a float number that's legitimate but generally speaking other values different types cannot be compared you'll get you'll throw an error and also relational operators actually can be applied to lists and tuples as well and we'll see some examples of that where that will make a little bit more sense so here's a, an example of determining whether a condition evaluates to true or false um, one less than or equal to one yeah that's true the first condition is false one is not less than one but the second condition is true uh, one is equal to one so there's always an implied and or not an and but an or sorry an implied or when you're using uh, an less than or equal to so one or the other can be true um, one less than one that's obviously false is car less than cat yeah it comes alphabetically before that but here's one how about dog with a capital D is that less than dog with a little d well that's going to be one of those it depends answers you're going to have to look and see what the uh, character placement is in the ASCII chart Do the capital letters come before lowercase letters and if I remember right I think they do so I imagine this would evaluate to true here's one that's given us an example of the in the statement is the word fun in the word refunded yeah it's right there so that would actually return true here's a couple more that are done with expressions we're evaluating expressions this time not just individual elements so we have the results of a plus b is that less than the results of two times a or is the length of the string c minus some number equal equivalent here's the two equal signs is it equivalent to this the result of this expression and here's another one see some of these start to look weird because you're used to seeing this kind of thing in math and not with text stuck in here so you have to adjust your expectations a little bit to where it is legitimate to do comparisons on text so is C less than um, well, actually you'd have to see the example in the book for this to make a little bit more sense so this is actually a example 2 on page 424 where they have assigned the variables a and b to have the values of uh, 4 and 3 and then the value variables c and d have the values of hello and bye so this is basically saying is hello less than good plus bye is hello less than goodbye well that would actually evaluate false because H comes after G uh, in the alphabet. Okay, sorting in Python is a piece of cake. Uh, very little that you have to do here. We're going to take a quick example. Uh, they do have to have the same data type, but you can do the sort with just the dot sort method here. The example shows it very beautifully. Here's a list of numbers. You say list dot one or list one dot sort and then you print out the list and here it is down here sorted from least to highest you can do the same thing with uh, numeric character based information or not numeric character based information here's ha high b and seven if you sort that print it out and this is again this is in order of how things appear in the ASCII chart so numbers come before capital letters which come before lowercase letters and then HA would obviously come before HI. So sorting a list, I mean, we can, this one gets a little off the wall. I mean, you start to get interesting stuff here where you're probably not going to do some of this stuff. But here's an example where uh, we're taking the ASCII value or 177, which happens to 
uh, equate to the sense, or not the sense, the plus minus sign. Then we have a bunch of uh, other variables here, and we run it through, we sort it, and it comes out like this. So just take a look at this when you need it to actually figure it out. It's not super important right now. You just be able to use it to sort uh, numbers and different things that are in a list. You can also sort tuples. Now this much more useful scenario where you have uh, a list with two columns in it, if you will. So we have a couple of Georges, a couple of Elizabeths. Each has uh, a number in the next column. And so if you sort that, the Elizabeths names come in first because alphabetically they're before George. And then it subsorts within those uh, list so that one comes before two and five comes before six. So the behavior here is pretty much as you would expect. Logical operators. We've talked about this. Ands, ors, and nots. This is pretty straightforward. We're evaluating conditions and you, we're going to end up looking at what we call compound conditions because there typically is going to be two conditions that we're evaluating when we're using a logical operator. So if we're doing the AND, condition 1 AND condition 2, it's only going to be true if both are true. The OR means that either one can be true, and the expression will evaluate the true. And then the one you're probably not used to seeing very much here is the NOT. Uh, NOT condition 1 uh, returns false if the condition is true. This requires a little bit of reverse logic, and typically where you would it's just specialized places where it becomes convenient to use this. And typically you'll know it when you see it because it's like the traditional way of doing it is awkward. You'll find this a lot of times when you're setting up uh, loops. Sometimes you want to evaluate a condition under a not uh, kind of a statement. So here's some examples um, given that n is 4 and the variable answer is capital Y. They're doing an AND condition here is 2 less than 4, yeah it is, and is 2, or is 4 less than 6, yes it is. So that would obviously evaluate true. You can see, uh, look at these on your own. Here's your equivalency operator again. These are, the compound ones get a little strange, you don't typically going to get this many in a in a one string, but it happens sometimes. Um, so they'll just evaluate straight across. There is a way to shortcut this or provide some shorthand notation. And this is a Python-esque kind of a thing. A couple things to keep in mind. When you're doing an AND statement, condition one uh, this turns out false, it's not going to bother to check the next one because it knows that it's it could never be true, so it'll just drive on. Same thing happens with an OR statement. If it finds the first condition true, then it knows the whole thing's going to be true, so it doesn't even bother to evaluate the second one. This can actually work to your advantage from time to time. Uh, this statement gives a good example of why that might be. Uh, here is a, a simple math function over here, but we're doing a division, and we don't want to end up with a division by zero scenario, because that would throw an error. So a quick way to uh, stop that from happening is to do a precondition here and say, as long as the number is not zero, go ahead and do this over here. So Python comes along, it evaluates this first. If this fails, and then uh, it goes ahead, well, you may have to be careful, there's a not equal, okay, so anyway, if this is zero, it's going to fail, and it'll draw, just won't even bother executing this, it'll just move on to the next statement. So you can use this as a test to validate different kinds of conditions. Okay, the Boolean data type, that's simply either a true 
or false. This is the way we reference the type, the data type, shorthand for Boolean. And we have an example here. And I've actually put that up on, hello, there we go. This is what that looks like when you execute it. So x equal 2, y equal 3. You set up a variable making it equal to the expression x less than y. And then if you print that, it comes back as true, which obviously it is. 2 is less than 3. So you can use this as a test and evaluate it to see if things are true. Or you can use it to, for conditions and loops and things like that. Um, it just depends. Now, in a lot of programming languages, this would be 1. Uh, and false would be zero, but with Python, it's literally uh, the string true. All right, let's get back to this here. So these are certain methods that return Boolean values. So if you're testing uh, certain conditions, this can be useful. Here's a couple of strings. And it says string 1, does it start with strings 2? Well, true or false, it's going to return a Boolean value. String 1, does it ends with something else? So these are useful conditions to be able to evaluate for loops and other types of things like that. Here's another unique little thing in Python, um, determining the type of an item. So if we know what kind of data type we're looking for, like it could be Boolean or float or int, uh, we can say, is this instance called item this particular data type? So this would be good for confirming that, you know, some item that we may be read in off of a list is in fact a number. And if it's not, then we could proceed to convert it to a number so we could possibly do some calculations on it. So there's actually several of these methods that uh, return Boolean values. Uh, is it a digit? Is it alphanumeric? Is it a, uh, what do we got here? Characters or letters? Okay, either letters of the alphabet or digits. Uh, lowercase, is it uppercase? Uh, is it uh, white space only? So there's a whole bunch of those things that are built in to Python that when you have the need for them, you can just go grab what you need and utilize it. All right, here's a simplification that can be done. As you can see in the example, we've got four different conditions where we're, uh, in some programming languages we call this a case statement or a switch where you're trying to determine which of the values it was. Python, we can shorten that up a lot just by saying uh, state in and then provide the values for that. So this is equivalent to this great big long line up here. Kind of a, a nice little shorthand. And another one that's kind of cool is this, but this one will require you to think a little harder. Uh, a very simple thing in this particular instance, x greater than 10 and x less than or equal to 20. So we're talking about a specific range of numbers from 11 to 20 that would make this condition true. So we can shorten that up with this context here. 10 less than x less than or equal to 20. And it makes sense as you read it if you understand what we did up here. So is, you know, 11 to 20 would be the proper range that would be true for this thing. And then here's another one with an or condition. So the, the this will be what you see with and conditions. Or conditions tend to generate these not things. So it's the same expression as we had before over here, but all of a sudden it's in parens and we've called it not. So or is going to be equivalent to the not. Of course, well, this isn't exactly the same, is it? I guess I was, I was just kind of missed that x less than or equal to 10 or x greater than 20. All right, so this is the opposite condition same range of numbers, but instead of excluding 
we're restrict we're requiring that that's what they be. So those kind of things you just have to think your way through when you run across them. And those are brought to us by a fellow or somebody called De Morgan, who kind of figured some of this stuff out, that uh, not condition and condition is the same thing as this, <laughs> and that's the, an or is the same thing as that. So I'm not going to spend much time on that. It's not too often you run across this stuff. So let's, let's just drive on a little bit. All right, I guess that's the end of this section. So we'll pick up and go a little deeper here on the next one.